Hello and welcome to the second installment of the Grow Beginner Kit for Arduino. My name is Casper Buckby, I work for the UKSF and in this video we're going to look at how you can get started building your own projects. I'm going to show you an example I made. I made a little spirit level using the accelerometer and OLED display on the Grove kit. And I'm going to talk you through the code and the challenges I faced while writing it and how I solved those challenges. And finally, we're going to look at where you can find inspiration and ideas and resources to complete your own projects. Let's jump right in. The first thing you want to do when you start writing your own programs and producing your own projects is start off by sketching your idea at a very high level of abstraction. And that just means creating something like a block diagram which is going to be very useful for you to understand the different parts of the program that you will need to write. So the question I ask myself is, what do I think my program needs to do for it to achieve my intended application? And for my spirit level, I sketch something like this. It's a block diagram of a five different steps that I think will be the main things that I'll do in my program. And I'll start on the top here get by getting new accelerometer readings. I will then take those readings and somehow convert them to roll and pitch angles because I want to know how uh, many degrees off I am from being level on, for example, my desk. Then I want to print these values to an OLED screen or the OLED screen on the Grove kit. And I want to have a statement that says, if I'm within two degrees of level in each direction, I want to print the word level on the screen as well. Else, I don't want to print the word level, and then we go back around the loop, getting new readings, converting them to angles again, printing them on the screen, printing level if we're within two degrees, etc. And we go around this loop indefinitely. And this is my kind of first go at what I think my program will consist of. And just to note, uh, as I already alluded to, um, you can use this to level your desk at home. Um, other applications that might do a similar or implement a similar kind of program is detecting orientation. So think about your phone. Um, you turn your phone horizontally, you need to switch the orientation of a photo, for example. Um, and then detecting if someone has fallen over could be a kind of medical application of this. So especially in elderly people, you might be able to wear a little bracelet that will detect if you're upright or not. All right. Um, so the next step then is to get the grasp um, or get familiar with the things that we need to use and need to know in order to write this program. So clearly we need to use the accelerometer, uh, which we have an example program of already in the UKSF Sixth Formers library. We also need to use the OLED display. And similarly, we have examples of how to do that in the library. Um, one thing we need to figure out is kind of the coordinates of the screen so that I know where the text I want to write ends up. And then we need to make them work together somehow. So we need to tie them together in one program. So we have the accelerometer, we have the OLED screen here. And that's kind of our spec complete. We've now gone through the rough block diagram of our program flow. We know where the things are on our board. We know how to use them and now we need to find out how, how to do that, do the steps and how to use them. So with that in mind, um, let's start with the accelerometer. So things we need to know is what does the output of the accelerometer look like? And where are, in what direction are the X, Y, and Z axis? So as I said before, we have the serial plotter uh, function in the accelerometer example that we can use. And I've taken some screenshots here of the code uh, that was, was given in the example. So here we're printing to serial the X, Y and Z acceleration. So that's useful because now I can look at the serial monitor and I can see the X, Y and Z values. So I have an idea of what does the accelerometer give out as an output. And further, if we plot this output in the serial plotter, you remember, you, you might remember that you get these graphs. This is even more useful, I think, because it's a nice visual of what's going on. So we can see that the green line here sits at a value of about one. And indeed, the printed value as well for the, in this case, z axis is one. So we can 
therefore surmise that on the board as, as I had it um, sitting just or sitting on my desk flat the z axis then would be the upward downward axis because we're measuring the force of gravity here and we're getting a value of one because the output from the accelerometer is in g's and in this case so you know the gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second square and that allows us to identify the z-axis. So we know that the z-axis is the green line and it gives us one when the board is sitting flat on a, on a desk. And contrary, um, if I tilt it along this way, I saw the blue line go up, which meant uh, I know the x-axis. And then if I tilt it the other way, I saw the red line go up and identified the z, uh, y-axis. So I have now the information I need to um, know which values from the accelerometer I need to use for making sure that I'm leveling along the x and the y axis. And I'll, this will become a bit more clear once we look at the program. Okay, next thing is the screen. So a few things we want to do is just decide what text style we want to use on the screen, then where to place this text. And in order for us to do that, we need to know the kind of screen coordinates. So again, I went to the sixth formers library or went into this display uh, example and I looked in the setup uh, function of the script or the sketch rather. And I picked one, uh, actually I tried all of these out to see what the different textiles looked like. And I picked the print black um, display for displaying my uh, angles. And I started out by printing on the coordinate zero, zero, the word hello and looked on the screen and saw where it printed it and turns out it starts here prints the first first character h and then the word hello so uh, i now know the length of five a five character word at coordinate zero zero and then what i did is i made the first coordinate one and i found out that in the y direction the amount of characters i can fit is eight and in the x direction, the amount of characters I can fit is 16. So now I have an idea of, you know, if I print that, for example, 5.5, five, it'll print that somewhere in the middle leftish. And this is going to be just useful for us to place the text in different positions. It's also worth noting that uh, there are eight characters and 16 characters of space, but the ranges here, the coordinate system starts from zero. So it goes from zero to seven and zero to 15. All right, so we're ready then, um, almost. It's a good idea now that we have the core of our program figured out to try to go even a bit further um, and towards a lower level of abstraction in our program. So you could try here to create a block diagram of now your loop function in a bit more detail. And granted, you'll probably come back and edit it edit this you know as you find out that you've done something in an order that wasn't quite right or you just ditched one functionality just completely but uh, this is going to also help us understand the code a bit more clearly so i'll show you the actual block diagram of what my loop function will do it's very similar to the um, first one so if we go back to slide one you remember i have five steps in my program loop and it basically just consisted of getting readings, converting them, printing on screen, and then doing this if else statement. And so if we go back here, I've expanded it a little bit. We still start with getting accelerometer readings. We convert them to roll and pitch angles, but then I do some intermediate steps here, which is I add them into a summed variable and I do this because I want to take more than one reading per time I print it to screen. So here you see my next block is if readings equals 10, then only do I continue in my program. So what this will achieve is um, if the readings I've taken isn't 10, we'll use this else branch and go right back and get another reading from the accelerometer. So we'll go through this loop, go through the else, back to around 10 times each time adding the reading we got into a sum variable. And once the readings equals 10, then I compute the average value of the readings. And I do this as a kind of um, 
filter, if you will. It slows down the program a little bit and it gives me an average over 10 very fast readings from the accelerometer and it gives me time to print the value on the screen because the refresh rate of the screen isn't that quick. And you'll see this in action once we actually launch the program. But that's the first bit. So we have this mini loop here that takes 10 readings and just adds them to some variable. And once we have 10 readings and this if statement is true, then we compute the average value of the pitch and roll. Then we have the next block, which I also surmised in my uh, first block diagram. I check if the angles are within plus or minus two degrees. And if they are, then I print the word level. And else, um, I don't do anything except I clear the text from uh, or the text from the screen. Because if I previous time around printed the word level I and it's no longer level, then I want to clear the text away. So that's what we do in this else branch. And then finally, I print the roll and pitch angles at the top left corner of the screen, regardless of if we are level or not. And then I reset all my variables before I go around the loop again. So it's important that here as the last step, the summed variable of my 10 readings gets set to zero because again, I'm going to take this path all the way back around again and I want to take 10 new readings. So I don't want to keep the old sum uh, in, in store. And that's it. So once we've zeroed, we go back around the loop, take again 10 readings until this if condition here, readings equals 10 is true. We take the average, check if we're level, if we're not, remove the text, then we print the roll and pitch and zero again. And that's the structure of my loop function. So hopefully this will help in you following the code. And that's the next thing we're going to look at. Okay, let's bring out our Arduino code. So this is the program I've written. And as you can see, the text currently is very small. So one thing you can do in Arduino, if you go to preferences, is change the text size. So for your benefit, maybe I'll do something like 18 for the font size. And there we go, make the screen a little larger. So now you can actually read what I've written. Um, a few things I want to mention before we actually look at the details of the code is um, note that I've included this very long comment at the top of my code. And this is basically just an info section for myself, but also other people who might be reading this code. And it's going to help you to identify, first of all, which program this is, and then what you need uh, in order to use it. What is the program about? the components that I'm using it, the revision of the code. In this case, it's the first revision. And if you want, you can include the author name, in this case, my name and the date you actually created the code. And this is going to allow you to, you know, a year from now, come back to this code and remember what you've written and what you've done. And I know it's a little bit tedious to do this, but you're going to thank yourself later. Okay. Um, then a second thing worth mentioning is so far, you might have um, written quite small programs and initialized most of your variables in either your setup or your loop function. What I've done is something slightly different. I first uh, included a section called here variable declarations. And I basically grouped together all of the variables that my code uses. So this is just to collect them here at the top um, it's going to make it easy for me to change things. So here um, I have, for example, number of samples equal to 10, which is exactly what I uh, explained in my block diagram. But if I wanted to change this, I could do so very quickly by just scrolling down a few lines and changing it to five. Instead of going and finding the position in the code where I actually use this variable called number of sample and changing it there. So it's a useful thing to sometimes to do, to have these global variables they're called that are accessible by both the setup function and the loop function if you need to. So what are the variables that we're using? Uh, just a brief overview. We need to use the display. So I have a variable display called my display. I do the same for the accelerometer, call it my accelerometer. This is straight, uh, just straight copied from the 
accelerometer and display examples. Then I have uh, floating point variables and floating points in programming is just when you need to use decimal numbers instead of integers. So I need to have three variables for my accelerometer. They are the accelerometer or acceleration in the X, Y and set direction. Then clearly I needed uh, to convert them to roll and pitch. So I need a roll and a pitch value. I also wanted to sum them. So I need some variable called sum of roll and the sum of the pitches. And then I needed to take the average of them. So I have two further average roll and the average pitch values. And then the integer values I needed in this case um, is to first of all count how many readings I've taken, which is why I initialize this value to zero. And then how many samples I want to take, which in this case is 10. And that's it. Those are all the variables that my program will use. All right, um, then a very simple setup function. And here we needed to initialize three things. I want to initialize the serial mon monitor because I might want to look at the uh, values that I get and, and see them on, on my uh, serial monitor or plotter. And then I need to begin my display and I need to begin my accelerometer. And these are again the lines, the setup lines copied from the examples that you that you have in the six formulas library. So in the tutorials, if you look at the, for example, the accelerometer, um, you can come back here and copy this line of code too, if you forgot how to, how to begin your accelerometer. All right, and that's all the setup we need to do. And now we're gonna go into our loop function. And this loop function is long, it's about, well, a little less than 100 because the whole program is 100 lines of code. But it's very logical if you keep the block diagram in mind. So uh, you can bring that up just briefly. So I'm going to keep referring to this block diagram when we go through the code. And this is going to help us keep track of what's happening. All right. Let me hide that for a sec. Um, right. So the first block in the block diagram was to get accelerometer readings. And, oh, by the way, good idea for you to note down in comment lines what you're doing in your code. This is going to make the code much more readable. And you're also going to be able to keep track of things much more easily. So first thing is getting values for the acceleration in all three directions or all three dimensions. So we have the acceleration in the X value and we're getting the accelerometer read X value put into this acceler acceleration uh, variable. And same thing for read y and read z. And this is again a uh, functionality that you can find in the accelerometer code. Simply copy this. Um, and here you see the difference, uh, by the way. In the loop function, we define a float called x in this case, and then we store the x reading into that float, floating point variable. I defined the floating point variable before my code, so they're ready to use. And then I only need to ref reference the name of the variable. It's already, the program already knows that it's a floating point. So it's just a difference of where you initialize these variables. Okay, so that's the first step of the block diagram done. We have our accelerometer readings, easy enough. Then we wanted to convert them to roll and pitch angles. Now, that was a bit more tricky because I didn't know how to do that. But thankfully, when you don't know how to do something, all you need to ask, do is uh, ask the internet. So, I googled for Arduino pitch and roll from accelerometer. And lo and behold, you get a bunch of links uh, telling you exactly how you can do that. The two first ones were turned out to be very good. Um, so the first link here is how to use a three-axis accelerometer for tilt sensing. There is a bunch of information here you can go through. Um, basic knowledge, they talk about um, how the roll and pitch and your which axes they are, for example, on an airplane. And then you get some maths to tell you what the angles are. And eventually, if you scroll down, you can find some code usually. And here we go. We have 
a line for calculating roll and calculating pitch. So you could maybe just copy paste these lines into your code and make it work, but it probably requires some uh, changes because first of all, you can see that we don't have anything called uh, Y buff. So this variable is different. And secondly, um, you might want to explore the um, explanation a little bit because I'm a bit uncertain, for example, why we have 57.3 here. It's not completely clear to me at first. So you might want to look at several examples, but at least we already have two candidates for calculating our roll and pitch. Let's go to the next link and just to scroll up here. This article, very similar. Someone's used an accelerometer they're showing here with an Arduino. They show us how they've hooked it up. Again, going through the pitch and roll angles. And then there's a section on pitch and roll estimation. And here, um, again, they talk about that 1G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then how they calculate acceleration and then how you get your pitch and your roll angles from those acceleration values. And this person um, even links some documentation uh, in here, which is useful if you want to know more. But even more useful is when you scroll down and find again two equations for the roll and the pitch. And this time um, they kind of make sense um, there is something else going on here with this 180 over m pi, which I didn't see in the equations here. So if we just have a brief look, it's the arc tangent of the acceleration in y divided by the square sum uh, under a square root of the x and z acceleration. But nowhere does it say um, 180 over m pi. And that I figured out is because um, you get these roll and pitch angles in radians. And if you want to convert them to angle in degrees, then we know that one loop around a circle is two pi radians and that's 360 degrees. So the conversion from radians to degrees becomes 180 over m pi. And m pi, by the way, is how you write the number pi in Arduino. All right, so this seems more reasonable. Um, I think these are the equations I ended up using in my program at the end. Final point though, if you really want to know um, how, why the roll and the pitch are these equations, you can do a bit more digging and find this very nice application note from NXP. It's written in 2013, but it's completely valid today. And they go through how you do tilt sensing using a three axis accelerometer. Uh, it's a quite a long document of you know 20 or so pages, but it's really interesting to to look at, for example, this image where they show an electron microscope image of an accelerometer and how they explain how it works. So they're using some very, very small masses and very small spacings between two different masses that are allowed to move. And that will change some capacitance and then you can measure that and it goes through the whole operation of the accelerometer chip or a typical accelerometer chip. So very interesting stuff. Um, but they also explain the maths. It's quite complicated. So I can just scroll through here quickly. You can see the equations that they're going through and the angles and the signs. And eventually we get to the good part, which here we go. The tangent of the angle is the acceleration divided by the square sum of the square root. So this is the same equation we got um, solving for the pitch and roll angles is what you eventually get out. And if you want to have a uh, really good grasp of why these equations are true, then I suggest you go and read this, this um, NXP application note. And I've also included links to these in my code. So I'll just hide that. So you can see two links here uh, explaining where I, where I get the quick derivation and where I get the more rigorous derivation. So um, from the quick derivation that also gave me the code. I simply copied the equations in here. I needed to change a few things though, which is I need to use my variables. So my variable names are uh, these three and I just substituted them according to um, what they wrote here in, in the equation here. So you see FYG and FZG, that's the 
y acceleration, the z acceleration. And so here it's my y acceleration and my z acceleration. But it's the same equation and this will give me the angle in degrees for both the roll and the pitch. All right, good. Next block on our diagram after we've converted to roll and pitch is to add them to a sum variable and then check once we have 10 readings. So here I do exactly that. I add to my sum of rolls what's already in there, which is going to be zero the first time around. I add the value of the roll I just calculated from here. So I'm next time I come around this loop, this sum of roll will already contain one number and then I just add to itself the value of roll. And same for pitch, except I use slightly different notation here. So this is a, a neat shorthand that you can do in Arduino. Instead of writing uh, the, exactly the same thing as the top line here, you can simply write plus equals pitch. And this is shorthand notation for saying whatever is in sum of pitch, add to it the value that's stored in pitch. And it, this is a very popular shorthand. Sometimes these make your code clearer. If you use too many shorthands and you get too fancy, it might become unclear. But I, I recommend you using this one. It's quite intuitive once you learn uh, what it means. Okay, so we've now added the values to our sums. Now we need to keep track of how many times have we done that. So I increment my readings counter variable. I add one to it. Now here again, I'm using shorthand notation plus plus. That means you add one to this variable. You could have also written readings counter equals whatever it was in the readings counter variable plus one. But you can see that this would take up way much more space. And once you know what plus plus means, quite intuitive. Okay, we increment the readings counter by one. Right, and then the next thing we need to do is check uh, our if condition. So do we have 10 readings? If we don't, we should not do anything. We should go back and get new readings and come back and check if we have 10 again. So let's see what that looks like. That starts here with this if statement or rather this if statement. And this if statement is quite a big one, but it starts off by checking, hey, in our readings counter variable, is, um, is the number stored there equal to the number of samples? And one thing to note here is you need two equal signs when you um, compare two variables. So if I only have one equal sign, the program will think I want to assign the number of samples into readings counter, but that's not what I want to do. I want to check, are they equal? So I check if my readings counter is 10. If it isn't, then anything I've written inside this if statement, so anything enclosed by this curly bracket, won't be executed, it'll skip it. And if I highlight my entire if loop, it's quite long. It's all the way down to line 99. So all the stuff in yellow here, if we don't have 10 readings, we won't execute any of these lines of code. Because the if statement fails, the readings counter is not equal to number of samples. So it says false. It says, let me ignore everything you've put inside the if statement. And it'll come out after the curly bracket here. And you'll notice that I don't have an else. There's no word here after this that says else. And that's because it's implied. So if that if statement fails, it's simply going to go to the next available line of code, which isn't in the if statement. And if we look at what we want to do, so we've just failed this if statement. We are therefore in the implied else, we want to do basically nothing. We just want to loop around and go get new reading. So go right to the start of the code again. Now that's true. That's exactly what I do, except for one little thing, which is I included a small delay. So this is nothing but a pause in the program. And there is a function in Arduino called delay that you can give a number to tell it how many milliseconds do you want to delay. So here I wait for 10 milliseconds. And the reason I do that is to again, slow the program down a little bit because I don't need readings very quickly. 10 milliseconds is a very short time to wait anyway. And it helps with glitches sometimes. So this else path here, if you will, imagine it just takes 10 milliseconds for us to get back here. And that's what this delay does. So we're 
cleared it from the else we're doing nothing we're delaying by 10 milliseconds and then we're going right back up again so this end of line here this curly bracket is the start of my loop function and we are right back at the beginning we're getting new accelerometer readings we're converting them to roll and pitch values we continue to adding them into the sums of rolls and pitches we're incrementing how many times we've done this now two and we check again have we done it 10 times no we skip the if statement come back all right so let's pretend that we get to the 10th time so the 10th time i've added a sum into my roll and pitch sums and incremented my readings counter then our if statement will be true and it will execute everything inside the curly brackets of the if so inside there then the first step we wanted to do because we've now successfully oops we've successfully completed the if reading system we want to compute the average value so the first two things i do is i calculate the average roll and the average pitch and now this is not a such a hard mathematical uh, statement to figure out because you have a sum that includes 10 uh, different readings so you need to divide that sum by the number of readings which is 10 to get your average roll so we have our average roll and we have our average pitch value great that was the first step and then we have a nested if so inside this already uh, inside already this if statement we have another one to check if we are within two degrees of being level and if we were we wanted to print the word level else we wanted to complete uh, clear text from the display. So let's see how that's working. Okay, one intermediate step here that I didn't show in my block diagram because it's not uh, doing anything new. It's simply just simplifying the readings a little bit. I'm um, rounding them up so that I don't get a decimal value in degrees. I just get an integer value. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I like the look of it on the screen more um, I didn't care so much if I was 0.3 or 0.4 degrees um, above or below because already I'm only checking if um, or determining if I'm level if I'm within two degrees so I just want to print uh, integer numbers and so one in between step that I do here is I actually initialize two new variables called average roll rounded up and then I use a round function that is built into Arduino that just says, hey, I have a floating point value. Please give me just the nearest integer value. So this is just a step for aesthetics. But note that we do need to use then uh, the new variables now going forward called average roll rounded because those are the rounded values. Right. So we wanted to check if these rounded values are within two degrees um, in both directions. And then we wanted to print the word level. And that's where the next if and the next else statement comes along. So the first is if we are in, in the two degrees margin, we wanted to print the word level. And that's this line here. I'm printing it in black in large in the large font on the coordinates 3, 3 on the screen, and it's the word level. So, okay, that's great. Um, that's if we're within two degrees. If we're not within two degrees, I wanted to clear the display. And here I clear it by printing basically white space. So you see here I have five white spaces and that will clear the word level if it was on screen already. And if the screen was empty, then it'll just print more empty. Um, the condition for the if statement is slightly clever. Uh, I, I could write this as two ifs if we're within two degrees in the x direction and if we're within two degrees in the y direction but you can also combine them so there are two statements here exactly what i wanted to do if x and y and the first one is highlighted here in yellow between these brackets and then the and operand here is two ampersands so it's the same as two equal signs but this is the and equivalent of it so if the first statement and this second statement are both true then uh, it executes the if and what are these statements well they take the average pitch rounded value and they check is it less than two degrees but it should check if it's between minus two and plus two and the way i achieve that is by using the absolute value of the 
rounded pitch because that removes the negative sign so whether or not I'm minus 2 or plus 2 it'll check is that value um, less than or equal to 2 which is the number of degrees I wanted to define as my level point and it checks the same thing the absolute value of the average rolls if they are less than 2 then we go in here so when you use these absolute values you can um, imagine just it measures the distance from zero so both the positive and the negative end it checks how far away you are from zero and i want it to be plus or minus two so if those distances are less than two then i know that i am in my uh, world level and those are the statements that are included in this uh, if uh, condition and the else one doesn't need anything because if we're not within those two degrees then we're somewhere else and we needed to just clear the display okay hopefully that made sense um, so we've now cleared this box if angles are within two degrees print level else clear the display two things still left to do um, first one of those is printing the roll and pitch angles at the top left corner so regardless of if i am level or not i wanted to see what the roll and pitch were and that's these four lines of code here so it's a bunch of printing in black to my display to different coordinates different things so at the coordinate zero zero i.e the very top left of the screen i print the word roll and when you print stuff you need to enclose it in these um, uh, semicolons no not semicolons um, what are they called oh complete blank Quotation marks. There we go. All right. So you need to complete them, uh, include them in these quotation marks, and then print the string you you want to print. And uh, I'm combining several of these strings they're called together with this plus operation. So first I'm printing the word roll and then a colon, and then I'm adding to that a stringed version of my average roll, the rounded up value. And again, there is a function to convert from an integer into a string because we need to print strings uh, in Arduino and it's called string so this function here this bracket returns to me a string of the integer stored in average roll rounded and adds it straight after the roll and then I go further and I add some more white space and I add this these white spaces because I want um, to print the letters deg or degrees after this and I want to leave some space between the actual integer value and the degrees uh, uh, characters. And same thing for pitch, exactly the same thing. Use the string function for the average pitch rounded, add some white space, and then I add the degrees text after that. So uh, I add this in position 10 in the X direction on the screen so that they're nicely positioned. And you can experiment with this, I didn't, uh, know how this was going to look at first and you know you can try nine or eight here just whatever looks best on the display okay um so that takes us printing the roll and pitch angles and final step is resetting all our variables to zero before the next iteration so that's pretty simple everything i've used so far in this if statement in the loop i'm just setting to zero so i'm resetting my counter value the sums and the average rolls and the average pitches all to zero so that we're ready for the next loop then it's done with the if and what do we want to do we want to take this same path back away to the top of the program so we again have this little delay and then we loop back up and that's it so there's a lot of things unpacked there um, you might want to watch this video again if you were confused about any part I hope these links help you understand the role and pitch equations. And my advice for you uh, when you write programs like this is to just start and see what happens. Because if your code does something strange or wrong, you'll see it For this, in this example on the screen. You can try different textiles, um, how, how things look. You can change the delay here to see if what if you make it zero, what if you don't delay at all. You might get some glitches on the screen. So. Programming at large or making own quick projects like this for fun, uh, it's going to be very useful for you and a great learning experience to play around with these things. So I'm going to give this code to you pre-written and you can 
come in here and change uh, things as you as you wish and hopefully that will give you a very clear understanding of what I've done and a good foundation for you to continue on your own projects. Here's my growth kit and I've just pressed the upload button on my IDE waiting for the code to be uploaded and hopefully we should see the text level printed on the screen because it's sitting on my desk and there we go and if I start tilting the board to the right as soon as I go above the two degree mark the text level disappears then we get back same thing if I tilt it to the left or if I tilt it forwards or if I tilt it backwards so the code seems to be working and just to bring it a little closer at all times I'm printing the roll and pitch values in degrees on the screen and they'll change dynamically when I move the board around. So I encourage you to upload the code to your own board and playing around with the values in the code to see what effect you make on the screen itself. Finally, I'd like to point you to a few resources online, which you can use to get ideas and inspiration for your own projects. So a good place to start is the Arduino homepage. And here you have a tab for community where not only do you have a forum where you can ask questions if you have questions specific to your project, but you also have this project hub, which is a very useful place where people have uh, gathered the information of projects they've done before. And this is great. There's tons of them here and they usually include step by step instructions and the code and ins and outs of their projects. So if we go, for example, into the air quality monitor, Someone's built here an air quality monitor using an Arduino Nano. They list the sensors that they've used and the tools that you need. And finally you get code. Yep, they've listed their code here. So everything's freely available and you can um, copy these projects or just copy parts of the code like we did uh, with the roll and pitch calculations. And another place you might wanna look uh, in lieu of having the Grow Beginner Kit is the Seed Studio. Um, website. So the Grow Beginner Kit for Arduino is a board that they've designed and they might include some examples here on the side that we haven't covered that you might want to look into. They also have a bazaar or a shop uh, that you can go to which is uh, full of uh, all things electronics. Uh, do note that this is a Chinese manufacturer so the delivery times might be slightly longer than if you buy uh, locally. And the final thing which is easy to do is to simply Google Arduino projects. And not only do you get a bunch of kind of pre-made kits that people have gathered together from different suppliers, these usually include a lot of modules and the components you need to build a bunch of projects. So they're a great way to start. But also you get links like 30 plus Arduino projects with DIY instructions. And they just list even more of them with even more communities talking about what they've made using the Arduino. So that should get you on your merry way. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and the content and continue to enjoy electronics. Um, I've been doing this for the past 10 years myself and I continue to find the fun and new things to do. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.